what is up everybody welcome to another episode of the heart is a muscle podcast this is your co-host jordan james we got joseph in the house the other co-host what are you going to be talking about today well i'm not only going to be talking about this but we are going to be talking about how to get a deeper connection in your sexual life Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. we are going to talk about energy work we're going to talk about safety in the bedroom in multiple different ways safety outside the bedroom how to work your masculine feminine polar connection and much more and why my orgasms are getting so long you got to find out you got to find out how i have like 10 minute orgasms come on you got to find out for that so stay tuned and we'll share all that real quick Welcome, everyone, to the Heart is a Muscle podcast coming to you live from the center of a galaxy. Yep, here we are. Here we are. In the universe. We are out floating in, the bosom in space. Of the mystery. <laughs> that really is the bosom of the mystery. Mm. Oh, I love cuddling in the bosom of the mystery. I know, especially with you, baby. Yeah. And especially with all of you fine folks here. Mm-hmm. So we have a great topic to, t- to talk to you about today, which is Something Jordan and I have been working on very hard over, yes, very, di- diligently. very diligently over, um, I don't even know how long, but uh, we're going to name this one Deeper Sexual Connections because this isn't going to be a, uh, you know, your grandma's sex talk. This is going to be some new age, let's blow your mind in a real way. And this isn't going to be some boring like tantra you know, doing PC pumps for 10 oh hours. Oh my God. Have we, we haven't talked about we, how we <laughs> bought a Tantra book to go through and it was boring. It was we, so boring. And we, and we we're like, when did we get to the sex part? <laughs> I think we did talk about that last time, but okay. if you missed that one, not all Tantra books are as exciting as they sound. Yeah. There's a lot of homework and there's a lot of PC pumping, pumping and not having sex <laughs> a lot of gazing into each other's eyes though yeah that was nice yeah we don't do that as but, often but even then we were i was like after a while it's like okay like how am i how am i yeah, supposed to blank. feel yeah, yeah was <laughs> all right but this is we've been thinking about relationships nonstop because that's our passion and we're actively doing one as well yeah, it's police mics. Yeah, we are really doing this thing. Yeah, huh? we're doing we're doing the relationship thing for real here. Yeah. And so far, much success, if I do say so myself. Great success. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. High five. <laughs> and one of the things that nobody wants to talk about, but is a very vital part of a relationship, is the sexual part. Yes. And we are both super into masculine feminine polarity and a lot of the fundamentals behind that of why should anyone give a shit about that stuff is because that's what creates sexual tension tension and not the kind of tension that you know when your uncle phil talks about something inappropriate at thanksgiving is this is the tension that like magnets feel when you're like trying to pull them apart and they're just like no nah, let me have at it let me have it. i want that i want that other pole i want that other polarity uh-huh and so creating exactly right. yeah creating that uh between you and your partner now that is some real deep sexual connection right and there and it's super fun yeah it is really fun it's really fun yeah it's uh it's what they say the uh spice of life wow <laughs> and well, and and I mean, this is one of the things that I wanted to say about it too, is that it really does start outside of the bedroom for me. Yes, and that's why we're going to get into it nice and deep, because that's where you have to start. That's how we do. Yeah, before you can get really deep into it, you got to get deep into it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> let's kick it off from there. God, if there wasn't a motto for my life. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's take it away with getting deep in it before you get deep in it yeah yeah i so there was a time actually i thought about having i I thought about recording this episode a long time ago and i was gonna one of the first things that i was gonna say is that like you like penetrate me with your aura like in the kitchen all the time like there are times where you just come up and grab where safe (laughs) (laughs) But like, it's not in a um, 
I don't know. It's not in like a clingy or annoying way or like a, I don't know. Like some, some women I think like have some boundaries around that. I just, I guess I don't with you. Like, I love it when you come and like grab me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like there are times, a lot of times like in the kitchen or just doing things when you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to penetrate with you with my aura right now, <laughs> you know, like, and it's like kind of fun. It's always just, like, hanging out, swinging silly, around. Silly and goofy, but uh, yeah, you're always helicoptering your aura all around the place. <laughs> we talked about that last time we talked Did about we? sex. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's still funny. It's still funny. <laughs> and gentlemen, if you're not helicoptering your, your, uh, your aura around, get to it. Okay. I think well, I think that is a special projector thing in human design. I, I think and, everybody and can he, throw that around a little okay, bit. Okay, sure, but especially projectors. <laughs> like, if you are a projector in human design, your aura is penetrative. Mm -hmm. You you like literally have a, like a proboscis in front of you in your aura it's a cone. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I envision it as a cone. Yeah. That's how I focus my my energy. And it's not always like sexual energy. It's just like no. energy, energy that is emanating out of my presence mm -hmm. moving into the future. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there's many a times when I'll maneuver that energy right into you. Yeah, intentionally and mm -hmm. consciously. And then that allows me to like consciously receive it. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that, and I think like why I don't, why it doesn't feel annoying or like too much for me is because... I genuinely feel like there's no expectation around it. Like there's no. no, it's just like, like that's just a fun thing we experience in that moment. And then we go back to doing whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, okay, this has to be something now. Like, so that is the other thing that I wanted to say is that especially for women uh, or feminine beings, like expectation is the biggest sex killer. Yeah. It sucks. It's like, oh. Expectations are kind of the worst for everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They always expectations always seem to uh have that magical quality of never being met mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> isn't yeah. that the truth how many times have you so set an funny. expectation and then you're just like well, i fucking fell through yeah but yeah the uh exchange of energy that's like one of the real fun things about masculine feminine energy is that we're always you know we always have kind of a major uh i guess energy we tend towards that we kind of culminate and just to be clear, before everyone gets up on their high horse, this doesn't really have anything necessarily to do with gender. No. But there are strong correlations that if you're born a man, you tend towards masculine energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's also nothing wrong if you don't. And you tend towards feminine energy. It's always a balancing act. And it doesn't matter which one you tend towards as long as you enjoy it and embrace it and just go for it. Yeah, it's more it's more of the energy. So like I think there's a difference between like male bodied humans and like masculine creatures. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, like those don't have to be the same thing. Yeah. And they often aren't. Sometimes they are. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they, sometimes they are. Yeah. So this this masculine feminine like polarity thing, this does not have to be a like man woman binary type of thing. This is really a energetic, like polarity type of thing. So mm -hmm. you could look at this clearly outside of gender. You could talk of this as yin and yang. You could talk of this as, you know, left and right. You could talk about this top as and bottom. top and bottom. Yeah. I mean, there's there's all kinds of things. Sub Butch and femme, sub and dom. Yeah. <laughs> Good old times. Um, yeah. I mean, we we look out our window and we see little pairs of duckies doing this dance all the time yeah little sweeties sweet just uh going after each other <laughs> in all the ways yeah. in all the ways yeah nature is unabashed about masculine feminine polarity and <laughs> it does it in a million different flavors so there's no reason why we can't either but uh just keep it simple yeah we'll probably generalize a lot here yeah yeah <laughs> just yeah i'm glad that you you said that because when we when i like i often refer to feminine energy as, as she and her and masculine energy as him and he mm -hmm. but that has nothing to do with actual gender mm -hmm. that is just the energetics that i'm talking about yeah so back to energetics and how fun that is because really to take your sexual experience okay. oh yeah you got something it's like circling my nipple there and <laughs> Hey, okay. Now that we're on YouTube, we gotta be a little episode. more inappropriate. Okay. We gotta keep all of our clothes on. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see how this goes in the summertime. I know. I didn't even notice you had that little pocket right there. Yeah. That's where you keep your weed. Put your weed in there. <laughs> but yeah, back to energy. So energy and the I'm gonna I like to call it sexual uh sexual tension because yeah. even if you don't put it in the context of sex, it has that same kind of like arousal arousal feeling. feeling. Yeah. And I think it's important to not to to shed our Puritan ancestry and like yeah fuck uh, that shit burden from uh, back in the day where sex was this sinful thing now fuck all that shit also I just want to give a plug to everybody who grew up in the church like it complicated sex and relationships so unnecessarily like all that shit is bullshit it's patriarchy it's like so fucked up so yeah. I have I have absolutely forsaken all of that and oh. i encourage you to do the same we're gonna have some forsaken sexual energy that's here. my fire and brimstone I'm the suck. <laughs> I'm the suck. um but yeah this mm -hmm. is i mean i really enjoy talking about this i think it's really fun it's uh yeah, got to the good part we haven't even talked about sex at all really um but yeah this is an open discussion and if this makes you uncomfortable that's cool but you should ask yourself, why does this make me uncomfortable? Okay. Okay. Um, so sexual tension, sexual energy, masculine, feminine polarity. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you know, I am always putting out my my aura, my masculine energy. It's always just kind of like floating around. My human design is where I channel it forward into this penetrative force that goes into the into the universe. If you don't like the word penetrative sorry because that's kind of what it is it just moves forward into things and you yeah. know I, I walk over to the fridge and i'm penetrating the fridge with my energy and yeah. i open it up i can't find what i'm looking for so that's probably my that's that's my punishment yeah. <laughs> penetrative blindness penetrative blindness <laughs> but yeah it is really fun to like um just open yourself up to the uh, sexual polar energy of your partner and a lot of the times that's what kind of magnetizes me towards Jordan where it's just like she'll be doing something else and I'll see her and be like "Ooh, I see this energy here or I feel this energy I'm gonna go and say hello yeah that's the thing about him he's an energy worker y'all like he feels this shit I think we all feel this way more than we want to let on but uh -huh. when you really like open your mind open your open your experience to it because it is there's so much that we've been kind of brainwashed to think like, yeah, you know, energy and all that shit's woo woo and it's not real. You know, if we can't measure it, then it's not a real thing. Well, try it on for size and see if you don't enjoy it anyways. Yep. Because, yeah, a lot of the times you can, even if you just imagine in your mind, like you're holding a ball of energy or you're like passing energy back and forth in your hands like a slinky. And just kind of like imagine what that would feel like and just let that feeling kind of grow in your hands. Like take away one of your senses. Like it's really fun to do in a, a sensory deprivation chamber, like where you go and float. Highly recommend that. Yeah, me too. Because then you can really focus in on like the body sensation of it because energy mm -hmm. flowing and emanating out of your body is a huge sensation type of thing. And that... Totally is why it's a really powerful tool for sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. like I haven't I haven't been opened up to that kind of sex until you until most us people have discovering together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz did you were you like consciously wielding this before? Mm, I wouldn't say I was super consciously wielding it, but I probably really unconsciously in like in was in tune with it. Yeah. Um you know, I think a lot of the times guys can experience this when they really feel like they've got like a lot of mojo or they've got game or something like that, where they're just super in tune with their usually masculine, like penetrative energy and how that attracts feminine energy. And that's what I would probably call is like a lot of game, you know, guys who have that. And like it can really make the difference in the bedroom when you can like move that energy around and then you can also use your own energy that polarity of your own energy to move your partner's energy around and get that shit flowing oh that's mm -hmm. so fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's where it gets deep and 
that's where it gets super fun and playful because yeah. you know the like good old fashioned traditional uh action of sex of what do you want to say like ding dong and ho ho interaction pnb interaction pnb <laughs> interaction um that's all good and fine but really that's kind of a, a culmination experience yeah. of God, the whole thing that goes you. to it yeah and if that's really like only what you see as like sex then we have a whole new tool set we're like the um the tool guy that shows up with his giant van worth of tools and is like oh you only got a, a set of wrenches let me sell you this like three thousand dollar like chest of wrenches yeah just kidding everybody but there's that many tools that you can use and you can mix and match and play and honestly even if you kind of do the same motions and like same exercises they always kind of turn out a little bit different and you can always like even stuff that's really vanilla flavored sex you know it's just kind of like your basic stuff you can really spice it up you can we always like to call ours french vanilla sex you know just like vanilla the ice bean. cream vanilla bean <laughs> <laughs> um and a lot of this has to do with working that energy with yourself and with your partner and man it takes you to wild places it takes you to the bosom of the mystery yeah that's why we're here in the universe yeah. like if you're only listening to this we um we're literally in a galaxy right now yeah you can see that on our youtube channel yeah and this is the place that you can go during your sexual experiences and it is awesome yeah Mm -hmm. gotta crack crack a door get some air i know we're, we're so our energy is is flowing so much we're starting to get the sweats <laughs> <laughs> we just ate a lot of chicken wings too so got got that we're well before. fed yeah and so we're ready to talk about sex so jordan uh <laughs> well fed and well fucked <laughs> those are the, the two uh pillars for us mm -hmm. that those are strong pillars that a relationship will last a long time on <laughs> Yeah, it'll make up for a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Jordan, tell us about uh, your experience of sexual energy and how we utilize that to the best advantage. Oh, my God. And what does that, do what does that really bring to the experience? Well, I was telling somebody the other day that that because she was asking, like, what's new for me? And I was like, oh, oh, some I've got something that's like pretty new. Um, but it's been happening like more and more and more and more and more lately um, is that my orgasms are so long. Like they're so long and like, who knows? I might have several. I don't, it's hard to tell at some point. It's just like, so there's just like so many different uh, like flavors and like layers of it mm -hmm. and i had no i had no idea it could be like that mm -hmm. i thought it was just kind of like you go over the crest and like that's it yeah that's not it that's yeah. not it at all no you could pop a wheelie on that thing and yeah. just ride it <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it feels like <laughs> yeah. yeah so like that I, that's just kind of the one of the outcomes that i'm getting from this mm -hmm. but um I just want to say like that's it's kind of a real thing like it's real it's it is having outer world results oh you know? yeah um yeah so it just and it feels so for me it feels like kind of an accomplishment I guess for me to be even talking about this because feminine energy was always something I felt on the outside of mm -hmm. I always felt like I wasn't enough for it or I didn't belong to it or I didn't have access to it or something um, but also like um, trauma fucks this up fucks like awareness of this mm -hmm. up also my church upbringing like I guarantee there is Good some church there are some like memories of that in my body um, and yeah growing up in just a patriarchal society I think I mean for me I it just seems like there are some women that have no problem just tapping into this for me it was very hard and like even when I started to think about tapping into my feminine femininity um that was just last April even when I first signed up for Sophie Josephina's course mm -hmm. um I I it like made me sick to my mm -hmm. stomach like it made me nauseous to even like think about 
I had to go really, really slow with it. So like, that's where I'm starting. Um, or that's where I started, but now it's like, Ooh, I know, I know how to like, it's hard to explain, but I, I can tap into it in my body. I just like, I feel the energy. Like I move, I move a lot more or like I, I can just like feel the energy moving up and down my body. I am, I'm consciously like, Oh, I'm conscious of like receiving the energy that you're giving me through pleasure. But it also feels like sometimes I was going to tell you this the other day. It felt like I was like releasing something. Into oh, you. yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I really like that feeling of like releasing. It's kind of like you're like tapping on a valve or something where I can like release. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I I definitely that's part of the that's part of the. Where Look pleasure, at that smile. Yeah, where, where the pleasure like seeps out of that tension is that exchange of like mm-hmm. giving and taking. And sometimes it's a really graceful give where it's like, you know, you're kind of sprinkling powdered sugar over it. Or sometimes it's a like, come on, give me that thing where you're like smacking that that, uh-huh. that pleasure in there. Yeah. So you get to like really play with it and like really work off of each other's energy. It's this real kind of almost like a um like a volley or a spar that you're doing with each other it's really cool totally yeah it's really fun and and i i'd say for me like i would not be able to access this if i didn't feel safe with you yeah so that right there gentlemen that's the number one place where a lot of this has to start from is that this has to start from a place not so much of like aggressive taking or dominating um It has to start a lot from creating this like safe space of like, no, this is for you to relax, to let down your guard, like to create this nice little nest. Yeah. And I think I think the safety is created out like outside of the bedroom, too. Yeah. Like for me, just like being able to trust that because because for women, where we start where society like teaches us how these dynamics go is we give something up and then we're made wrong for it and and the dude can just go on his merry way and feel great about himself (laughs) yeah and like feel like like he's kind of like bested us like like that at least that's how i've started i was like that's why a part of me like never wanted to like wouldn't come or wouldn't like give it up because it didn't want to be like conquered by that kind of energy Mm -hmm. and so um i think just being able to feel safe with you that that's not how you are thinking about this that especially for me this is just what what i what me and my parts needed a lot was like to really trust that like yeah you wanted to be with me and you will be with me tomorrow you know like you will be with me after this um and that this was this wasn't like a uh being conquered thing like it was it was it's, this is a safe thing for me to open up to mm-hmm. uh yeah like that that makes a big difference if i don't have that i i don't have anything like mm-hmm. i don't i don't i this that this energetic experience that we share in sex is unavailable to me mm-hmm and my parts are really sensitive about that, but I wouldn't be surprised if if that's how it is for a lot of women, oh, a yeah. lot of feminine creatures. No, that's that's part of the thing that when you can feel, when you start to tap into your energetics a lot and you just really open yourself to what you're feeling, you'll recognize it a lot as more of, you know, when you walk into a room and you kind of see someone and you think it's like intuition where you're like, oh, that person kind of seems like sketchy or that person seems really nice. And when you open up to energetics, you feel the energy more than you do like, oh, I just know what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And so when you, you know, are with your partner or even if you're dating and like kind of new to someone, being open and sensitive to that really lays the groundwork to create that layer of safety and um, vulnerability Mm -hmm. that is where you start from because without that there's always this like block the energies always are kind of blocked and you kind of just are kind of pushing pushing at each other and Mm -hmm. it's like plexiglass yeah there's there's just disconnected and Mm -hmm. you're just kind of doing the act and Mm -hmm. then at the end of it you're like well that was great Mm -hmm. i'm gonna fucking go yeah 
<laughs> and like it's a real kind of tragedy when that's how the energetics start and then a relationship forms around and you never really let down that barrier mm -hmm. um because oh, yeah. then eventually there's not really a point to having sex because you're not really exchanging anything you're not really getting that much pleasure out of it um i mean for guys there's definitely a kind of release mechanism that really helps refresh our internal chemistry clear our mind all that kind of stuff and even that kind of loses its flavor after a while um, when there's no sexual tension when that energy is not exchanged mm -hmm. and that plexiglass is up it just feels dead it, it just feels, feels dead. benign oh, yeah. yeah oh and i mean oh. that's where so many relationships eventually just become roommates yeah. or like um when there's other priorities that are kind of like blocking energy or taking so much of your energy, whether you've got kids or a career or, you know, super needy pet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Have you, have you seen that video of that woman eating a radish, like an older lady? And she was asked the question, would you rather have sex or a radish? And she was like, well, it depends. Like if it was good sex, I'd rather have sex, but if it was bad sex, I'd rather have a radish. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse than bad sex. <sighs> god it's the worst it's just like oh i can feel it in my body like thinking about it like, yeah oh, oh. i think most of us would um pass on bad sex if we knew that was what was going to happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah give me a radish but man good sex i didn't know it could be like this y'all i did not know and like there's definitely a whole you know universe of good there's like oh this was really nice and like just kind of what we both needed and we connected and it wasn't it was simple and just kind of fun you know real basic kind of interactions that are really powerful like those little baby interactions mm -hmm. sometimes that's what sex can be of like you know what that was just great i'm glad we got to do that mm -hmm. and then it can go all it can go to infinity where it's just like i i thought we were like one entity being and like you know the you know astral plane and pleasure was like this infinite source of um exploding we were in the big bang and all mm -hmm. the big bang was was just pure pleasure uh -huh. it can get crazy like yeah that. it really can um oh shit something just came to me that i really wanted to share but now i forget what it was so i'll have to that'll have to come back don't worry it'll come back oh man it was so good well, we were talking about um, safety and creating that and having that be. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, guys, girls, everybody in between. Safe can be so sexy. Mm -hmm. Like so often we think of our culture thinks of good sex as like insecurely attached sex like <laughs> uh, like you know the the sex where like the 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 anxious partner like finally gets the attention of the avoidant and it's everything that they their parts ever wanted because it's the salvation of their trauma you know like and and it's like so high and um your nervous system is just like oh this is the best thing ever like yeah that's great but like there is a whole other kind of sexy sex like because for, for me now like i don't want that kind of sex actually like there i have found something way 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 better and i'm safe and i'm safe like while i experience it mm -hmm. um and god it's just so sexy because it is it is like two human beings playing together with like the power of the universe with the energy oh, yeah. of the universe is what it feels mm -hmm. like yeah, we're playing and with, like stuff. That, yeah, that is only accessible to me when I feel safe. And so now, like, it's it is safety that's super sexy to me. Mm -hmm. So how can uh how can partners go about cultivating that? Because that's the part outside the bedroom that really starts. Yeah. And there's some in the bedroom as well. Yes. So unlike Miss Jordan. Well, I'll say because there's there's things that each partner can do for one another, but also things that each partner can do for themselves. So I'll just speak kind of like for me and what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, I had to find safety inside of myself. So um, I had to find safety being me. I had to find safety in choosing to be 
ordinary Jordan. I had to find safety in like, um, yeah, that, that I was enough to experience pleasure that, that didn't, that I, that I didn't have to be on the outside of that anymore. Mm -hmm. That, that me thinking that I was on the outside of experiencing that kind of pleasure, um, and love and safety was, uh, yeah, that, that belief just wasn't there anymore. Um, so I had to find safety in myself. And the other thing was I had to trust myself to set boundaries, to say no, when I mean no. And yes, when I mean, yes, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. to commit to myself, like sexually to say, I am not doing anything I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Even if he really wants me to do it, even if I'm halfway through and I don't want to do it anymore. That was my boundary that I made with myself was like, I'm not doing anything that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I will stop at any time. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like that, that was a couple of the things that I needed to find safety within myself because like for our parts, if they don't trust us that we like when they stop enjoying it, that we will like stop or that if they don't want to do something that we're going to force them to do something like that, our, our parts are not going to find any safety in that. Mm -hmm. And that is also bucking the patriarchy and bucking our culture of how women are taught to behave in sex. Yeah. Um, we are taught to, you know, like please the man at all costs. Like it's like a performance thing for women <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> I that's mean, so crazy. Kinda. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, so I had to like completely step out of that dynamic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. even before i knew what a new dynamic was i just knew i didn't want that and that i wouldn't yeah. participate in that kind of sex anymore and for i mean this i laugh not in the sense of like oh i think that's stupid or silly but it's just like it's such a fucking mind bend for me that like there that exists in the world as well so creating safety is setting boundaries and respecting boundaries um because that is honestly it's it's not that difficult to when a boundary is like crossed or a boundary is is voiced to acknowledge that and to be like all right that's cool let's take a step back from that boundary and and see where we need to go mm -hmm. um and a lot of that does come from cultivating what do you want to say a understanding of uh, the need for that safety because that's that's what we all create boundaries for is to uh, keep the integrity of our self-preservation of I don't want to do that and I'm not going to do that and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a th it because a lot of times what we do is we'll uh, what's it called where you bring that in we'll internalize that as oh you've done something wrong you crossed this boundary and now you're wrong and that can really set off a lot of triggers of like, oh, well, fucking I'm sorry for, you know, wanting to like give you some pleasure or try to be nice to you. And, you know, all of these kind of things where you try and protect yourself from that feeling of I'm bad. I did something bad um, because that's the power of a boundary is it's not so much of like you did something bad as uh, I'm I'm calling this I out right now. That's not being right. met or like, this is me meeting, meeting my needs. Right. right now. And it's an opportunity for both of you to like step back and say, okay, what do we need to do different? Uh -huh. What's something that we can do where we can, we can experience this and not cross that boundary. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of the funny thing with boundaries too, is once you like open to that possibility, a lot of the times those boundaries will kind of, either progress or they'll dissolve or you'll kind of just come to understand them as something that's a necessity and it'll be a really connecting part mm -hmm. um and like that is it's one of the things that i think we don't really want to surrender to the importance of those boundaries because we often like get triggered by when they come up yeah totally and that's the kind of the other aspect of what do I want to say doing your work outside of the bedroom 
or outside of like sexual experiences that makes it really powerful when you're like, oh, okay, we've crossed a boundary. Okay, thank you for telling me. Like, let's take a step back. I don't want to cross that boundary. If that's something important to you, like really being open and um, genuine about honoring it. Yeah. And like seeing it as a real thing. Yeah. And the the other thing too, I, I don't know if this is exactly about boundaries, but it's about um, like when I, like a part of me being a, was afraid to step into the fullness of my feminine sexuality and my fullness of the my feminine sexual experience because it is uncontrollable and it's not always going to behave like mm-hmm. sometimes it will be pleasure and orgasms and sometimes it will be like bawling my eyes out you know like it it really is it's an experience of me of just for me of like surrendering to whatever life wants to flow through me Mm -hmm. and so like here we go about expectations again if i feel like you had this expectation of like me needing to be a certain way or feel a certain way or like if if tears were to come up like that wouldn't be okay anymore like then then i just i can't like i wouldn't be able to access the fullness of my feminine sexuality because it would have to look a certain way Mm -hmm. and so i think that's something that you do so well it was like just the other night yeah like you what you i i came and then i cried a whole bunch in between and like you <laughs> held me when i cried and then I, like it was time to like move on to the next thing i was i was ready for more so it was like mm-hmm. i don't know you do such a masterful job of just navigating the feminine flow of things like i'm and i'm yawning during sex like i'm i laugh sometimes yeah it's funny when you laugh yeah <laughs> yeah it's so I'm like what's so funny yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but like it's really nice for me like it just it feels so good for me to be able to like express myself and be however feels right instead of like however i think it should be however mm-hmm. other girls do in porn or you know however yeah you know men think it should be it has to be something understandable it's not going to be understandable it's not going to make sense it's the fucking feminine yeah let's get one thing out in the open right now porn is a terrible 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 example of what oh, sex God, is so and what it should be bad. it's so bad so bad like i know that there's there's certain types of porn that are supposed to be more of like for couples and are a lot less like dramatic, I guess you could say that's all good and fine. But like your run of the mill porn is just weird. It's just weird. Yeah. It's not, it's not and, reality. And you know, it's weird when you're watching it, but like <laughs> yeah. also it's good to be explicit about it. Yeah. So if you're looking for sex advice, don't go looking at porn. No. Um, Keep porn for your like fantasy mm-hmm. or for something kind of fun or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like it's not educational. They should put a warning <laughs> on all sex. Like this is not this educational. This is not how you actually connect with other yeah. human beings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, porn's porn is what it is. It's a whole industry, and like, not gonna dock people who do it because it's a living, and it's definitely a big business. Yeah, but it could do a much better job of like portraying real life sex, but. On it's, the other it's hand, not like made to show how people actually yeah. connect with each other. It's made to like make men typically feel better about themselves. Yeah, I mean, if you had have video of like people just having really good sex and really enjoying it, it's probably not that like exotic or dramatic. Yeah, yeah. but like that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, this is the better I thing. Mean, Would you porn like that out there? Yeah, there's all but... kinds of porn out there. But There's like all kinds of porn, man, you know, you're getting into the weeds when you got some real weird stuff coming up yeah. on like the up next <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Algorithm. Yeah. Or... It's like, okay, yeah, it's time. It's time just to close this browser. Yeah. No, thanks. Algorithm. <laughs> um, But yeah, this is the thing that I think is a really powerful message for people that you don't have to be like doing a handstand and performing some kind of like acrobatic sexual act for sex to be good I'm like please stop performing yeah please stop performing whatsoever during yeah. sex Perfor- sex is not a performance it's not a performance yeah. sex should be um it should be an impromptu performance <laughs> it, it's like it's just you, you go and you're like you're doing like uh in-person poetry uh-huh 
But when you're really good at that, then it's really good. And that's kind of what sex needs to be like. It just needs to be this like, I mean, it's that that same flow of energy, like uh, impromptu musician who can just fucking jam and like bring people to tears with just their creativity and their flow and all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of same energy you want to. That's cultivate. like intimacy. Yeah, or for sure. Sex, but it's not intimacy. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like and and where the real like juiciness of it comes from, in my experience, I did not see this coming. But is the intimacy part? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I mean, that's what it is. It's when, so good. When you really start to play with each other's energy, you can feel the energetic connection you know during sex before sex when you're just messing around when you're just exchanging pleasure back and forth i mean there's all kinds of things you can do and yeah you really lose yourself in the experience Mm -hmm. and like become kind of this one this one being this one energetic center yes it's really really fun and I don't think this podcast would be complete without me saying this is weed really helps weed high sex. Well, let's, let's put a, a a disclaimer on this. This is our experience. Yes. So I've heard some people don't like it, but I'm also like, "Mm, what's wrong with you? I mean, (laughs) one of the things about sex is that it is this really almost kind of psychedelic experience when you're really, letting loose the energy that lives within you and kind of letting down your vulnerabilities and for us marijuana has really been able to like bring that to a new level yeah and oh so good um a lot of the times it really makes it a nice lengthy experience as well like it kind of just keeps your body wanting more it kind of keeps your ability to like fall off that edge Mm -hmm. um kind of at bay and I don't know what if this is just me being weird, but it feels like for me, especially, it has a lot more control over my body when I like want to release through orgasm or not. I can kind of be like, oh, I'm getting close, but let let's bring it on back here, and then oh, we can kind of like, like move through control. that. Sometimes, sometimes. yeah, sometimes. You know? It depends on the position. It kind of, <laughs> kind of depends. Sometimes it's just like, ah, oh, no, it's on. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think what it really helps me do is it helps me be in my body more. Mm-hmm. I think it really helps me bridge that gap because that's just not that's that has been such a blind spot for me in my life in general of like actually being in mm-hmm. my body. I mean, that's one of the great attributes of marijuana and other psychedelics like that is it allows you to really connect inward to your body, to your energy, and uh, with some skillful maneuvering of that during a sexual experience it can really blow things up now that does not mean that sober sex needs to be this like bland or not good thing too because that has its own advantages as well totally um and a lot of the times those can be those like real tender moments of just like shared experience where you know you don't even reach some like ultimate climax but you just share this great experience this intimate moment or Mm -hmm. you know a lot of the times some of our best sober sex is like when we wake up in the morning and that's just how we start the day yeah oh morning sex yeah i love that (laughs) but at least for me i'm still like kind of in that liminal space so it yeah you're in that that sleepy mode (laughs) yeah like that in between world Mm -hmm. oh so good yeah Oh, oh no it happened again i had one more i had another thing that it was gonna be so good well we were talking about sexual energy with mm-hmm. the heightened experience through using marijuana uh-huh. and we were talking about energy and how that allows you to be in your body because it really does like that's probably the best thing that i find about marijuana especially is that it allows the burden of the world to just kind of go away and allows you to really connect with a deeper version of yourself. I mean, a lot of my most spiritual experiences happen with that aid to kind of let go of all the clutter and sex can be that as well. Like sex can be an absolutely spiritual, like connective thing where you, you know, you literally feel like you've fucked yourself to like, Christ consciousness almost yeah everything you, seems to make sense uh-huh and like there's so no true. judgment there's no negativity you're just in this pure state of like loving existence yeah do you feel that 
hella. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I feel that like I've always heard people talk about that and I'm like, oh, that sounds nice. But like, I don't think I can do that. But I guess I have. Yeah, that... I, yeah, I guess I have. It just didn't feel like how I thought it should. Or... Well, it's a, it's a kind of a little bit different experience. For yeah, me, I mean, but... that's what expectations do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit different. It's it's more it's it feels it feels more real to me than like ethereal. All right. I mean, sometimes it feels ethereal, but yeah. I mean, for me, so like sex also has, it's like a, a, a grand opera. It has different acts. Mm-hmm. It has climaxes and low points. It has, it has comedy and tragedy. It has all these different things. And one of the, the places for me when I really feel that just spiritual ecstasy is like afterwards when you're both just like basking in like the, the remaining energy is it's just kind of like going out into the universe and you're just you know holding yeah. each other or like being in each other's presence and yeah. like drifting off into oblivion yeah well there has been oh you know what like my most powerful times is there has been times where we're having sex and i get downloads from the universe like do you do you remember when i had that download like so you're like stop everything no no something. i'd want well no i'd want you to keep going like but but i would you would like look up and i'd be like crying because I'm in such a deep mm-hmm. inner spiritual experience. Like there was one time where it was like my, this masculine energy came and like spoke directly to me and it was my soul's father. Like it wasn't my, my actual like physical dad, but it was like my, the father of my soul that was telling me like, you have always had me looking out for you. Like you've always had a father. Mm-hmm. like so shit like that i i don't know if i've experienced like exactly like the christ consciousness stuff i've experienced that in other places but like that stuff like that ha- is starting to happen to me during sex excellent yeah i thought of the other thing that i was gonna say great let her rip um and that is another thing that i had to do and that i consciously have to do sometimes too is um to not to not always need to be in a certain mood to start engaging in sex Mm -hmm. because like for me it's the intimacy part that really does it for me so like i can be grumpy and then i can have grumpy sex like i can start having (laughs) sex like that like that it's okay like grumpiness can be included in in the second experience like come here grumpy yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) or i can be sad or i can be um confused or you know like whatever mood i'm in um like that can be i can have sex in that mood and it might look different it's it's might feel different but like uh yeah but the the intimacy is what matters Mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah let's see what happens when i connect with joseph when i'm like this or when it's Mm -hmm. like this or you know when we're how whatever mood we're in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be like the same exact mood for me every time so i think like taking that pressure off of it of like because i think for for especially for a lot of women we're like oh yeah we can have sex but like we first got to get ourselves in the mood to have sex and so it's like okay he wants sex we've got to. that means we've got to do some like emotional gymnastics in here to kind of get ourselves on that page (laughs) and like when I I'm like no I don't like because I'm I'm not doing any sort of emotional gymnastics for anybody else anymore mm-hmm. really, um, but what I realize is there's I have a lot more flexibility to connect with you in all different kind of moods and it's mm-hmm. still fucking great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that brings me kind of to another thing too of it kind of touches back on that safety aspect of uh, sometimes to initiate sex is a real vulnerable ask of you know, hey, I'm feeling feeling lusty towards you. Is is that something you'd be interested in? <laughs> and for a lot of guys, there's there's a lot of insecurity around being rejected or being not good enough or of course. all that kind of stuff. And so even if it's not with the intention of, no, I'm rejecting you, but more of a, no, that doesn't really sound like a great idea right now. It can be this really tough thing. I even had to come overcome this a lot of the times because I would be filled with a lot of rejection too in past relationships where it's like, hey, I'd like to have sex. Are you interested in that? No, I'm not. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be sad now. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and I also think some sometimes people come across like, no, I'm not, and you're wrong for even wanting it. You know, like yeah. you're wrong for some. Like sometimes that is how it gets communicated because we don't want to feel uh guilty for not being in the mood for not being able to meet your needs so we're gonna mm-hmm. like make you wrong for having those needs man yeah we always, that ain't right don't we, do that we get we get stuck in our own shit and then we just make things worse <laughs> <laughs> Isn't, that's like the human condition that's the huh? human that's the unconscious human condition right there um and so yeah it is one of those things where when you tap into your energy and your partner's energy and things like that, you can always kind of tell if like, hmm, seems like there's some good energy here. Let's kind of feel this out. And you can sometimes, like this is something you have always been really great at and really intuitive of like, you can always kind of tell when something's up. Yeah. And you'll just be like, are you feeling horny right now? (laughs) A lot of my parts are like, Lordy. uh, Well, now that you mention it. Um, mm-hmm. which is great and like you know not everybody is like that not everybody has to be like be- that because sometimes it can be a really powerful exchange of energy when it's just like hey i'm feeling really uh into you right now or i'm feeling really horny and i want to express that with you or like uh can we have sex mm-hmm. like i'm really feeling that right now mm-hmm. does that sound good and a lot of the times when you've done that homework of creating that safety and creating that energy connection a lot of the times that's a real fucking home run right there well and you also are pretty good at asking about it in a way like you just say like can i eat your pussy later or something <laughs> it's like that how am i gonna say no to that <laughs> yeah that's always kind of fun sometimes to just kind of throw that out there you know see just test the water because sometimes you can kind of do it as is kind of fun and joking and and that's mm-hmm. also that um flirtiness too that's really fun that um you know, when you're in a committed relationship and you can still flirt with each other of just like building up that sexual tension just for kind of shits and giggles, that is a really powerful thing. So, yeah, sometimes I'll just throw it out there like, yeah, you're looking pretty good tonight. Um, you know, when we go to bed, I'm, I'm going to have to eat your pussy. Yeah. And you don't really have a choice. <laughs> OK, that is so hot. Like that. That is the advice that I would give men is the more direct you can be about it the sexier it is the more like like the more you can just like ri- like go all the way and risk that rejection like the more likely it is your is to get it because it's it's like an icky feeling for us when a guy is like hey so you know i'm feeling a little horny like would it be okay if we had sex tonight that's like oh <laughs> no <laughs> but but like if you're more direct about especially if you give me a compliment especially like if you not even necessarily like what I look like like sure that might be something but like um a compliment about the feminine experience that you watched me have that night Mm -hmm. or you know I'm I'm loving watching you laugh or something or um I love it when you cry yeah (laughs) let me fucking tears tears later tears make me horny yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's kind of a joke but you know what give it a try um yeah it's that's the 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 fun thing about sexual polar tension energy you know whatever however you want to organize that is it that is flirting yeah like playing and passing that back and forth when you're not like engaged in sex, that is flirting. Yeah. Is really, and that's when, you know, when you can get really skillful at that and kind of play around with it and be really silly and kind of like, Ooh, that was a good one. Let me mm-hmm. see if I can kind of dish back to you. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, that's always this thing that, cause when I was kind of finding my way around women and stuff like that, I had a terrible role models. I had just all these like asshole bro dudes that, uh, the volumes you know, game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they would have these terrible things that they would say where it's just like, um, yeah, women love it when you like treat them like shit. That, that, that's how you have to do it. Like, that's all they want. They just want to be treated like shit. If and they've it's got daddy like, issues, that's true, probably. And I was always like, that sounds awful. I don't want to treat people like shit. Mm-hmm. But the real truth behind that is that they want you to have that masculine expression of confidence of like, I'm going to tease you a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make fun of you a little bit. I'm going to find something that I know you're uncomfortable about, but not like demeaning. And I'm going to twist that a little bit. 
I'm going to kind of bring you out of your comfort zone uh, in a sexual way and kind of put a little bit of spice out there. I'm going to use my masculine energy and I'm going to create that tension. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be like kind of shocking or, um, you know, you really hit the home run when you can kind of say that thing. And like, they get that look of just like, Oh man, fucking you got me. Yeah. And I know that's when you know, you're like, I got you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that's really fun. Like when you can still play that way in a committed relationship where, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that is, a must have is that you work on the relationship. The relationship needs reps. It needs work. It needs tending. It's a garden and you got to weed it every once in a while. Keeping that flirtatious exchange of masculine, feminine energy fucking keeps it spicy. Keeps it spicy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because bland sex is also, it's fine every once in a while, but like if that's what's on the menu every day, mm. Mm. you'll kind of take it or leave it Mm -hmm. yeah I think that that's the thing like especially in this podcast like I don't know it's kind of two things that feed off of each other is our emotional connection and just our overall general relationship is fucking awesome and I think a big part of that a big pillar of that is because we have lots of sex and like lots of great sex but also like that we have lots of great sex because we have such a great emotional connection, emotional relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not so much a, like, it's much more quality over quantity Mm -hmm. because like we, we kind of go through phases of, yeah, we go through cycles, through cycles of more like rapid succession where, you know, it's like, Oh, it's an everyday thing and it's really great. And then there'll be some periods where it's like, you know, we could pass by and we'll kind of be like, isn't there something we used to do together? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's right. We used to have sex. Uh-huh. And um, I think and there's that kind of spices it up in it, itself. Yeah, too. it does. Because I almost think it's better to have like little sprints, and then mm-hmm. you kind of both like get the energy stirred up, and then okay, the energy kind of goes off into the universe. You know, mm-hmm. it, it kind of the universe has to be like, oh, Lordy, give me a minute here. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta recuperate. <laughs> I got to like gather this all up. You guys just spread it all over. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes life gets in the way and it's just like, no, you got to focus your energy on life or your job or kids or your super needy pet. Um, or, you know, you're like, oh, I got it in a rear end today because I'm jerk on the freeway and I'm not I'm not in a sexual mood. <laughs> or like your body is just fucking wrecked from the gym. Yeah, oh, that, nah, that never really stops me. <laughs> I always, I always muscle through. Yeah, I'll just at the end be like, ah, oh, double. Help me, <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> um, you know, this is not super important for this podcast, but great. But uh, sex is always a great, like, great exercise. Yeah, it really is. Like, a I great... mean, I don't know how much I'm exercising during sex, but I'm such a bottom. Uh... <laughs> I put you through it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm receiving a lot. Yeah. So uh, for for the men out there, yeah, it's definitely one of those, you know, you're having good sex when you're like, I need to work on my cardio a little bit, <laughs> you know, it's really I need to not, not I'm be sweating so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, masculine, feminine, energy, safety deeper connection what else like brings I'm, in some, some I'm real juice we got a There's few minutes left here some guys out there that are like okay joseph like what exactly do you do you know like to start playing with the energy like mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. from somebody who's like okay that sounds great but like where do i even fucking start yeah so where to start is it really starts from a mindfulness of just trying to feel something. I can't explain. <laughs> I can't explain to you exactly what my sensation is. Besides, it's a connection between there's an image of my head of what I want to be experiencing. And then there's a sensation in my body that I am willfully trying to experience. Of mm-hmm. A lot of the times I'll try and focus on a shape of like, 
I'll hold my hands like I'm holding a beach ball and I'll think, what does it feel like to hold a beach ball? And then I'll think to myself, okay, now what if that beach ball was just made of electricity? What would that feel like? And you kind of get into that space and you really, it is a focus type of thing where you're focusing your body, your mind, and then eventually that kind of energetic spiritual part shows up and you kind of play with that and you're like, okay, this is what it feels. My favorite thing is to do the slinky back and forth where you're like passing a little energetic ball back and forth. Cause we've all played with a slinky. And if you've never played with a slinky, go buy one off Amazon for like 10 bucks and just pass it back and forth in your hand. Because that is a real, I feel like that is a real representation of like what the energetic flow feels like. And there's much more traditional ways of like doing meditation where you can try and connect with your different energy centers, your different Kundalini centers, um, and a lot of breath work that goes with that of all kinds of different things. But for me, like the thing that really made the most difference was just consciously making a choice to say like, this is what I think it feels like, and I'm going to try and experience it. And then how do you do that in connection with me? You know, like, ah, how do you mm -hmm. start reading mm -hmm. off of my cues or what my energy mm -hmm. is? So this really is, for me, you really have to get out of your head of like, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up because it's, it's not like you have some radio um, antenna in your head and you're like, I'm picking up the energy now. Mm, here it comes. No, it's a real relaxation into sensation and when you're just around you know this this is the thing when you are out anywhere and you come across uh, an attractive woman there's this energy that kind of like gets excited within you now when you see your partner or if you see someone that you're dating or whoever is the like the person you're focusing your interest on and you feel that energy when you feel that you kind of try to keep that energy of just like yeah uh, this is that person this is the way that they kind of excite my energy and then when you physically get close you kind of imagine that you can almost reach into that person and kind of like you've got a couple of magnets in your hand and you're moving that energy with the oh, magnets. that's exactly what it feels mm -hmm. like to me, like being somebody who you're like moving my energy mm -hmm. around. Yeah, it's like you got magnets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like there's different places on the body that really are epicenters for energy. And a lot of them are your chakras. There's also a few kind of, I'm going to call them Joseph's secret special places. And the only reason I know that these exist is because nature shows us the way. Now, this may seem absolutely not sexual at all, but who has ever scratched a dog or a cat like right above their tail kind of right above their butt what do they do they absolutely fucking love it like dogs just go crazy and start wigging out and cats will just like melt in your hand and they'll love you and so i was like well let's try this on jordan let's see if that's the same spot for her and so i would literally just like in the the real small of her back right above her butt just put my hand there and imagine like there's energy right there and I'm just moving that energy around kind of in a little circle or moving it in and out and uh what happens Jordan oh I just <laughs> it just like makes my whole it makes my back arch usually or sorry I'm, I need to get close to the mic it makes my back arch um well and I it's just because I'm more in tune with it now too I'm just more in tune with the energy in my own body but it's like Ooh, like it starts like mm -hmm. moving some energy around. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I can feel it now. Even yeah, it's just kind of like the energy starts ebbing and flowing mm -hmm. in my body. Yeah, so you're kind of like using that energy that's within your hands to kind of create waves and to mm -hmm. kind of create ripples. Oh, and yeah. And then you can kind of literally move it up and down, and just that's part of that energetic experience that eventually you can literally like pull energy through your partner's body like a lot of the times you can do that to really get someone deep in their body really almost kind of like foreplay mm -hmm. when you're not really doing anything specifically sexual to you know your traditional sexual places but like moving your hands and kind of pulling and pushing their energy through their body 
That is, man, what does that, what does that do? Oh for? my God. It opens me up. <laughs> it opens me up. Like actually that is so helpful because you do that more often than even just getting started on, mm -hmm. on any like, yeah, traditional sexual move. Like even, even before traditional sexual foreplay, mm -hmm. like you start, you move my body around or mm -hmm. my energy around in my body and that, oh my God, that gives me access to so much more of me. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things like giving your partner a massage is always a really sensual thing. And my theory is, is because we always are doing this, you know, massage is one of those things that really helps release energy and release tension and literally move our our masculine feminine energy around and so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to always give your partner a massage you can literally just kind of run your hands over them and like breathe deeply and have them breathe in and out with you and get in those like cyclical kind of rhythms mm -hmm. where you start to sync up your energies and that's like the tantra piece that's where tantra like that's actually is pretty cool fun yeah <laughs> And gets really, really that that type of stuff with Tantra is really fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of do our own flavor of it. But, um, you know, that's it's really you kind of start by consciously trying to feel your own energy. And then it's almost kind of like a will and an intention when you're doing it in someone else where you're just like, OK, I'm going to like pull energy down your back. And like you can just play around with this and fuck around with this and like. It may not work the first time or you may not really feel something super strong, but it's one of those things that the more you kind of play with it and the more both of you surrender to the experience, like you'll start to feel something. And honestly, one of the things that can be really helpful with this is it can kind of stir up stuck energy. Yes. And like, so be be ready that sometimes you might like stir up some crazy shit that needs to be felt and needs to be expressed. Mm -hmm. But when you do you open that channel up to way more pleasure, way more intimacy, way more, way more access to life, way more access to, yeah, the spicy stuff of life. Mm -hmm. So get in there and get just, there. you got to give it a try. And it takes some time. Like, I don't know, we've been doing this for pretty much the entire time we've been together. And a lot of it hasn't been consciousness conscious. It's probably only been in the last like two years that we've really been like, oh, wow. Yeah, this is like a real thing because yeah. I think we were kind of unconsciously doing this. And then we learned about actual like energy work and like how that's an actual therapy. And it was just like, oh, of course, this is what we're doing. Let's like focus on that and learn mm -hmm. a little bit more about that. And you really took the lead on that, which was super hot. Hell yeah. Well, I recognize that it was just like, this is a super easy thing that could probably be pretty fun. And like, one of the things you were always really open about that was one of the struggles was how difficult it was to be in your body. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it was just like, well, this might be a great way to do that. Let's just kind of play around. And yeah, and it and it is. <laughs> <laughs> it was it continues yeah. to be mm -hmm. and it really when you can do that then you can really focus in not just moving energy around but like bringing your your own polar energy to it and really lighting things on fire when you can like push your masculine energy like deep deep inside your partner and mm -hmm. be like hold on to that fucking thing and just hold on to it so tight yeah that like it just it just like creates this almost like pleasure volcano yeah <laughs> it feels so good to be to like receive that and um i'm excited i'm now that now that we've spent some time like opening this up in me, I'm excited to see where it goes because I'm I'm really liking like I can access it on my own too, and I can especially access it when I'm doing when I'm pole dancing and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and but I can tell, I can tell that it's just me embodying the power of my feminine energy is so like foreign to me still. I mean, well, especially like in terms of like the sexual tension piece mm -hmm. um where like i remember it was a big thing for my parts to like dance with you watching me for mm -hmm. the first time um because i also have like some performance things that is like oh i didn't i didn't want it to be like that i didn't want it to be a performance i just wanted it to be 
me and my feminine energy moving my body like how it feels good to me mm-hmm. and you just happen to be there watching uh and so that started to get really fun and now like what i want to start playing with i'll just start dipping my toes into more is like holding that feminine energy um and letting that move throughout my body but all but then consciously like connecting with you Mm -hmm. as you're watching me Mm -hmm. like that's kind of the next level of sexual attention that i want to start mastering it feels like i'm i am like a a baby with this kind of stuff like it just seems like this this comes so much more naturally to other women it's felt like um but also given my trauma given what i've been through given just the size of my body like given so much it just it makes so much sense to that this is not like a muscle that i have been encouraged to build or to access even Mm -hmm. um so yeah and and i think that can be hard for a lot of women too is the shame of feeling like you're not even like connected to your own femininity Mm -hmm. to your own feminine power Mm -hmm. Because in our culture, men are so entertained by women that are connected to their feminine power, <laughs> you know, like those, like, how could, I mean, how could they not be like, I'm not making men wrong for that, but in a, in such a patriarchal dominated society, like, um, yeah, there are women who don't feel like they have that much access to their feminine power, to their feminine sexuality, to holding sexual tension in that way. Like there can be a lot of shame around that. Mm-hmm. Like they should be better at it, which, and I'm guessing it's similar for, um, like men too. Oh yeah. 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 It's, you know, like sometimes that can come natural to some men, their mojo is just natural. And sometimes like they've really got to dig deep to find their version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to share that too. That's kind of like my own journey with, uh, holding, holding my part of this, the sexual attention. Mm -hmm. All right. We could go on for a million years, but let's let's wrap this one up. So any final thoughts? Always wrap it up, folks. Yes, this is also important. Uh, you know, always be uh, safe and and make sure you're taking care of yourself, too, because venereal diseases. Yuck. Nobody wants that. Unwanted pregnancies. Ew. No, no bueno. Don't do that. Um, so always do your homework and always take care of that kind of good stuff. That is, should go without saying, but we're going to say it here. All right. Said what we've said. So we've said. So have some great sex. If you are interested in more of this stuff, check out our Patreon and then like contest it, contact us about it. We would love to actually like help you with specific things. And we don't care what it is. You can talk about the weirdest shit. Yeah, yeah. Go. So if you join our Patreon, you'll get access to listener requests where you will get to ask as vague or as specific as you'd like mm-hmm. questions that you'd like us to answer, topics that you'd like us to cover in future episodes. We would love to hear from you and provide that for you. Mm-hmm. And we won't be like, oh, you know, Tom and Sally are. Fucking- <laughs> They're apparently having a sexual <laughs> problem in yeah. their relationship. <laughs> and we're going to help them out. Now, this will all be totally anonymous, Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we're here to help you guys with. So we are going to peace out now because peace out. Mm. It's time to go. Time to go work on these. Yep. Yeah. Time to go practice some energy. Time to go practice some energy work. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. This has been really fun. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And hopefully this was fun for you, too. So from the Heart is the Most podcast. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for enjoying this episode of the Heart is a Muscle podcast. We really enjoy creating this content for you, and we want to share some more resources so you can get even more content. So take it away, Jordan. That's right. If you want to follow either one of us on socials, if you want to work with either one of us, if you want access to our YouTube channel, if you want to buy our book, (laughs) links to all that stuff is on our Patreon. So that is patreon.com slash the heart is a muscle. Now, you don't have to join Patreon to get access to those links. Um, but you probably should. <laughs> the 
the more that you support us and support this channel, the more that we can create this awesome content to help support you, because that's really why we do this. We want to make your guys' lives better and uh, your support really matters. Yeah. And what you'll get when you join Patreon is a shout out in our next episode. And you will also get access to listener requests where you will get to request what you want us to talk about in future episodes. So from the Heart is a Muscle podcast to you guys, thank you so much for all the support, all the feedback. We really, really enjoy it, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Truly love you guys so much. Bye. Bye-bye.